Welcome. Welcome to Switching Reels. I was going to say that. We need a like a theme song that I can go and splice in here. Do, 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 do. One that isn't copyright. That's not copyrighted. I just made it up. <laughs> then go make it in a DAW and send it to me. <laughs> I will use it. <laughs> I'm tempted because that would be so dumb. It would be and so dumb. So much fun. It would be also... so fun. I could stop it for a second and just make our pictures go swirly back and forth while it's playing. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's good editing technique. I know. I went to film school. No, no you didn't. <laughs> I think. No, I don't think my college had film as a major. So never mind. What school did you go to? Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Cool. <laughs> I can't say the first word in your college, so... Neither can anyone on the campus, so it's okay. Awesome. I did go to film school, and I know that you can do that. I just don't want you to. <laughs> it's like the Batman. Um, oh, like the... Spinny and the old yeah. Batman. It was so good. <laughs> All right. I'm going to piss some people off here, but Yeah, what do we watch? The 1960s Batman. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, this will not be the first time I piss people off. And this warning yeah. will probably piss them off more than my it's actual true, opinion. actually. However, the 1960s Batman was actively bad. It was just a bad TV show. Is that with the to the Batman Bill Robin? Yeah. Yeah. Batman. I liked the penguin. Well, some of the acting was fine, but the issue was that they decided to take Batman and make him the punchline to like goofy puns. Like they're not even good jokes. Like you don't watch it and you're like, "Ah, oh, this is hilarious." You watch it and you're like, "Why am I here?" So that you can have puns? Yeah. And because you're seven. And it's enjoyable, Connor. I'm sorry, I did Grow not... Grow in nostalgia. <laughs> I did not mean to attack your childhood. <laughs> <laughs> Just my character. That's okay. I'm fine with attacking your character. <laughs> <sighs> All right. What um, we watch today? Today we watched Spirited Away. Yeah, we did. The first Miyazaki film on the list from Studio Ghibli. Yes. So good. Yes. Loved it. We're talking about if we actually loved it here across the spoiler wall. <laughs> um, I did, but... I... Okay. I love it. Yeah. But also I love all of the Miyazaki yeah, they're films. They're all so good. I just love this one. A little less than... Probably the least. The least? There's Castle in the Sky. Are you kidding me? <laughs> we were going to go fighting. All right. <laughs> Castle in the Sky is top three for me. Okay, I have the very unpopular opinion that Howl's Moving Castle and Spirited Away are among the worst of his films. I think, like... Kiki's is better, I think. Kiki's was really good. Ponyo is better, I think. Ponyo is not better than Howl's Moving Castle. Oh, absolutely. No, it isn't. Absolutely. No, it isn't. The acting isn't even as good. I don't... And it's voice acting. <laughs> I don't care. <sighs> Ponyo's the better movie. How's it? Uh, <laughs> we're going to have to have an entire episode that's going to do a tier list on Miyazaki. <laughs> At some point here, I have to go and watch the other three. That we're gonna I we're gonna have to have separate tier lists because we are not going to. No, end we're up. not gonna agree. That's yeah. the best part. We're gonna have to like go and argue and fight about it and see if there's any common ground in the best Miyazaki movie. Goodness gracious! I'm uh, not sign up for this, Connor. <laughs> you actually did. I literally did. <laughs> Connor was like, "I want to watch the IMDb Top Two Fifty. I was like, "Oh, that sounds like a ten year effort. Let's go." <laughs> Let's be clear here. You asked me for movie recommendations. Yes, and you're like the entire IMDb. Well, you also did say I've always wanted to have someone that I could watch the IMDb Top 250 with. <laughs> yeah. And so I was like, Ugh, I like this guy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's been very fun so far, except for today. This is the, the, this is the, worst. the crowning moment of just the worst part 
so far. So, okay, let's go technical and enjoyment. I can't believe that you dislike Spirited Away so much that this was the worst movie to watch. Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can absolutely interpret it in that direction. And it's wrong, because you're wrong. I mean, probably. This, year this, is, this is one of the movies that I'm like, yeah, I'm probably wrong about yeah, my opinion. It might be. And I'm fine and with that's that. that's totally good. You've had a couple of weird takes as well so far on this list. Yeah. So. Like Forrest Gump, which I agree with you with, though. Yeah. Again, total aside, but Forrest Gump, I think, plays so heavily on nostalgia that if you don't share the nostalgia that it's playing on, it is very just, easy uh, to just kind of write it off as okay. Yeah. Um. I think the same goes for me in Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, but Saving Private Ryan wasn't trying to play off of nostalgia. No. Whereas Forrest Gump, it, that was explicitly that's all its that is desire. Today. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so, yeah. how did you enjoy this movie, Spirited Away? This one's probably... It's a 10 in execution. Yeah. It's a strong seven in enjoyment for me okay that makes sense um and Pretty some of reasonable. that some of that is for uh execution reasons mm -hmm. but i don't necessarily think they were the wrong choices yeah um and i'll explain that a little bit more on the other side of the spoiler wall Beautiful. Um, how about you um so i would agree i think execution is either 10 or nine and a half i feel like and we'll cover why at the end again on the other side but PG guys, like uh, I don't sure, really like don't most really things are parental rating. guidance, but like this one specifically, I just have it in the back of my mind when I'm like, oh, this is PG. Like Back to the Future and its time frame being PG kind of makes sense to me, but also this one had weirder things in it and blood, <laughs> so much blood. He was dripping blood out of his mouth at some point. Okay, anyway, um, so. That is technical nine, probably needs to go nine and a half. Enjoyment, though, is a solid nine, I think. So, okay. Very, very good movie. And I just, it, uh, I feel like this is one of those movies that just doesn't waste movement. Yeah. You know, like everything is efficient, everything has a purpose in this movie, and it's gorgeous. Ah, good. Uh -huh. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, cool. All Are we right. jumping? Are we getting the ladder? Uh, yes. Perfect. Um, so like, subscribe, comment. Yes, please. Email comments. us. Yes, I would love to have yeah. emails. Uh, let me know like, if there's a short that you want from this series at some point, like a short video, let me know and I'll just go clip it and I'll upload it and it'll be yeah. great. Um, but yeah, please uh, like, subscribe, comment, find us on Spotify and YouTube and yeah. podcaster of your choice. Uh, tell your friends. Yes. If you want to, if you're brave enough. I'd love to. <laughs> do that. I do tell my friends. Everyone knows work. Everyone knows of it at work. So. Yeah. I drop it casually in conversation. You too. Because, you know, exactly. it's a part of what I'm actually doing. So. Exactly. <laughs> Beautiful. I don't I don't hide a whole lot of my life from people. No, I'm you like, really don't. I'm just, ah, I'm going to, I had a horrible day today. You want to hear about it? Exactly. <laughs> Exactly, which is great. I love yeah. the candor. Your the candor <laughs> is likely your middle name if it weren't what it is. I think it's Michael. Yeah, so is yours, right? Yes, it is. Yep. <laughs> Another thing we bonded over just immediately. Yeah. All right. Um. Okay, let's go. So, uh, I actually kind of want to push back a little bit on the purpose. Oh, okay. element of it. Perfect. Um, there seems to be a lot in this that the purpose is not super clear. Like, why things are happening are not very clear. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of times, it'll be, hey, this thing happened, and so it sets up uh, this next thing Sen happening. having an object that will be useful in the future. Yes. So, in that way, it feels almost like a point-and-click adventure, but where point... it's like the actual mm -hmm. events are not what's important. Yeah. It's what you physically gain out of the event <laughs> like hey here can... is your next puzzle item right yeah. yeah um and so that bothers me a little bit it feels too kind of episodic and disconnected so in a the lot river of... spirit is the main thing you're talking about here 
I mean, there's the river spirit. There's the whole thing with the golden seal also. Like, why is that here? Yeah, the golden seal. The um, the whole encounter with No Face doesn't really seem to serve a purpose to me. Like, oh, see, so yeah. ah, I feel like we have to go into a meta analysis with this movie. So uh, I feel like that's likely what I'm going to do because it's okay. my favorite part of literary analysis. Okay. Um, so first of all, there is the theory um, that, and I think you probably know this, mm -hmm. like Miyazaki goes and makes a film to give off a vibe, mm -hmm. to go and convey a feeling and do it in the best possible way that he can yeah. without using like necessarily the words to go and describe it. Mm -hmm. uh, I've heard that Spirited Away is generally trying to invoke the feeling of alienness and like especially of a small child moving like going somewhere yes. new it's and it's completely foreign i have also heard somewhere and i don't remember where so i might just be and making this up out of my same brain. here um that this movie is supposed to be heavy, heavily allegorical for the sex trade oh okay and there's actually there's a pretty decent amount of evidence to back it up yeah the problem is if you look at it too much too as a, as an allegory, it breaks down really hard, really fast, yeah. and creates some really unnerving Weird. things that it would be saying about the sex trade if that were the case. Exactly. So, anyway, makes sorry. sense. So back to No Face. The I feel like the experience of No Face is just going and showing, like, to a child. What adults do does not make sense and generally seems destructive. Hi, I am a nice small child. I will give you what you need. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm here for. I have a desire, yeah. but the desire is generally to do good in Miyazaki's opinion. Yeah. And there is this creature that is trying to like connect, but the connection it gets is greed the entire time because that's how it knows yeah. how to connect. And that using that as an exploration of like the goodness of this child, even though she's going through crap, mm -hmm. is I think really, really cool. And neat. yeah, so I think he's very useful. Okay. I mean, I guess looking at this movie from the perspective of each scene being thematically important, but not necessarily being narratively important. Ooh. I could I could see a really strong a argument for this being great at doing that. Mm -hmm. The problem is I need both. Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. And if you have to choose one or the other, I would prefer that you choose narrative. Oh, interesting. I want strong themes in the things that I am watching, mm -hmm. but you know, watching or reading or but a cohesive however, narrative. Yeah, but I need it to be a cohesive narrative. Otherwise, my brain is just going off on all these tangents like, what is this world building? Like, some of it is super out there. So cool, though. Um, like, why does the witch have a giant baby that she is taking care of in the upper room? Yeah, that's a really good question. The baby is, like, four times her size. Yeah. and Jenny Who is the father? Like, yeah. <laughs> like, is it, like, does she, like, cr like... For like, like create, magic yeah. the baby, or I don't know. Was it one she found and adopted? Very good points. What's going on with the heads, other than them being the point and click adventure way to hide the fact that you've stolen the baby? <laughs> that was so fun. <laughs> like, like, there's so much in this that just when I start looking at it, I I don't understand what we're doing. Yeah. Um, oh, see, and that, and that just plays be... so much into the theme so well. Right, <laughs> right. Like, and it can play uh, into the theme and still piss me off. <laughs> absolutely. But like, and narratively, if you look at it from a young girl's eyes, mm -hmm. she has these exact same questions. She cannot stop to dwell on this. She has a problem that she needs to fix. And all of this weird ass heck is happening <laughs> around her. <laughs> like, okay, cool. Baby's an ally now. That's nice. I can use a baby ally. Thank you. And like, <laughs> this is a weird little crow fly. Now my ally. Perfect. Love this. I'm going to go and accomplish my goal. I do not know why this is happening. And I can't know why. Because 
For all I know, I'm moving to a completely new and unique place that's different than every other place that I've ever been. And this is what it feels like. And I have to deal with it because my parents say that I have to deal with it. Narratively, it makes complete sense to me. I would but say thematically it makes complete sense. I feel like narratively it makes sense because of the viewpoint. It's not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> it needs to make sense to the viewer. <laughs> it doesn't need to make sense to the viewer. That's We don't go into a Miyazaki film expecting it to make sense to us. Um, Castle in the Sky makes sense. No. Yes, it does. Where did the ancient civilization come from? The ancient civilization is an ancient civilization. It doesn't need more backstory. <laughs> yes, it does. Because <laughs> this is the part of the world building still. <sighs> <sighs> we need a good hour and a half of analysis of Miyazaki movies. Uh, <laughs> and I'm going to love it. I this have all so of them fun. except Boy and the Heron. Hey, so if you perfect. want to, we can go through them. Uh, it's going to be... Very nice to do, and then have a, just a large culmination episode at the end. I mean, a good portion of the movies in his filmography are on the top 250 list, so... Wait, treating Spirited Away, then, just as the first? As the first. <laughs> and then we just go... <laughs> <laughs> we'll watch all of them, even if they aren't on the list. We haven't had a series I'd in a be, while. I'd be fine with that. Hey. Okay, well, if you guys see a lot of Miyazaki films suddenly... <laughs> It's because we broke down and decided we wanted to watch all of them at yes, once. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Under the guise of, I want to uh, debate with Connor about which one's the best. Yeah. <laughs> but we actually really just wanted to watch all of them. Also, you have some horrible blind spots. Oh, I have so many horrible blind spots. Uh, specifically with Miyazaki. Yeah, like, I do. You haven't seen what is probably my favorite of his films. And you also haven't seen what I would expect your favorite of his films would be. Exactly. Which is wild. So. I think you will love Porco Rosso. I love uh, The Wind Rises. Oh, perfect. Which is not a super popular opinion. It's also probably the most straight-laced Miyazaki has ever been. Oh, interesting. Like, he doesn't have a whole lot of, like, I don't think there's almost any magical elements in mm -hmm. that one. And it's about normal people living human lives and but it's just it's so beautiful in so many ways and i love oh, it i can't wait for that that's gonna be so cool anyway not the point though to answer the most important question of this podcast um where does this movie stack up against 12 angry men <laughs> and the answer is it goes above 12 angry men i probably prefer this one to 12 angry men it's uh just it's a, it's a beautiful there is movie. a there's a certain point where the visual beauty just it has to supersede like you're you're comparing apples and oranges yeah when you're you really are 12 angry men oh my gosh the cinematography is great for what it needs to be mm -hmm. in 12 angry men yes this is just beautiful on its own you could take almost any frame from this movie and be like Blow it up here's, here's a, a painting exactly like <laughs> like there's a few scenes that wouldn't quite work with that because miyazaki loves his flying shots with like the ground blurring underneath you and he also likes, likes a lot of noise when it comes to things that are dramatic like oh, yeah. cleansing the river spirit or which is by far the best scene in this entire it's movie so good like there's Cleansing the river spirit. Yes. Helping in the furnaces. <laughs> the rest of the movie. <laughs> the rest of the movie. Uh, it's just, it's so good. Uh, yeah, no. I like it better the second time watching it. Like, yeah. I, I saw it for the first time probably within the last year and a half. And oh, really? the second time, I've, like, uh, this is, I, I really like this movie. I think I put it above Howl's. And I've seen Howl's Moving Castle. Okay. So many times. Howl's Moving Castle has the problem with this movie, but more so. Yeah, and that's does. why it bothers me. That makes complete <laughs> sense. I love the world building questions, actually, that I get from <laughs> all Miyazaki films. I so that I can then go and fill in. That's myself. why I like the ones that answer more of the questions than they ask. That makes complete sense. Makes Princess sense Mononoke like is Castle another one of my favorites. Because well. yeah. it just goes, here's the world. We're going to explain everything to you because all of these elements are going to be important. Exactly. And it's like, you have to understand the motivations of each character. 
I could gush all day about Princess Mononoke, yeah. so we're gonna have to wait till we watch that one. That's not. We'll, we'll start at like four, so okay. we can have a three-hour podcast. Would be beautiful. <laughs> and we'll take breaks in the middle, go get some water, come back. It'd be awesome. Um, but yeah, uh, I guess that's that's the thing with this movie. I don't have a ton to say about it. Yeah, um, makes complete sense. I think Sen is. She's a. She's a wonderful symbol. But I don't think she's a very good character. Oh, interesting. I think as a thematic device, she does a great job of that. But I at no point really find myself caring for her as a character. Like her parents turn into pigs and you go, oh, that's sad. I wish they hadn't, <laughs> wish had, they hadn't, hadn't pigs. turned into pigs. <laughs> Oh, she's got to work in the bathhouses. That's kind of sad. That's I wish she wasn't. Interesting. He's sad. <laughs> I you wish get, she didn't have to work in the bathhouses. You get some disgust for her, though. Like, you can put yourself into her shoes fairly easily. Yeah. Like, even if you... At least, I can see what you mean about the characterization. Like, you don't know very much about her. Again, I feel like that's part of the theme. Like, she's just in crisis mode this entire movie, the poor girl. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, but then you got to give me some more backstory from before she was in crisis mode so that I can connect to her being in crisis mode. You have a card in Japanese that you can't read. Well, no, she reads it out loud, but the, oh, you're right. the whole, you're getting yeah, movie. but the whole point of that is just, oh, she moved away from her friends. She likes flowers. She likes flowers, but she never got a bouquet of them until, until she, she was moving away. But her dad did get her a single rose. Single rose. <laughs> for, for her birthday. But that's not a bouquet. <laughs> it's not a single flower. <sighs> Beautiful. Yeah, okay. So, do we do summaries here then? Let's see if that brings up any other things we want to go and discuss here. Uh, yeah. Lovely. Um, go first, second. I'll go first. Beautiful. Um, little girl is with her parents going to move to a new city uh on their way they take a wrong turn and end up in a abandoned theme park her parents find a bunch of food and are like hey we can pay for this when somebody gets back here and they start eating all of it and it's apparently delicious but they turn into pigs uh she is then uh basically trapped on the island of spirits um because it turns to nightfall, and that's how it works. Uh, and she meets up with this boy, who tries to sneak her into the place, uh, and it doesn't work. Um, and she has to go sneak around the outside of the castle. This is going to be a really long summary. <laughs> anyway, she ends up working there. Take your time. And meets some new, uh, meets some spirits while she's there. Helps them out. Um, and then she leaves to go save her now kind of boyfriend who's a river spirit. Um, and then she comes back and, uh, he has made, uh, basically preparations for her to be set free with her parents. Um, and she gets set free with her parents by guessing that none of the pigs are her parents. And that's spirited away. <laughs> <laughs> nice! I uh, took all of the beauty and the subtlety out of it. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, I, this is a movie that I now want to watch, Connor. Thank you very much. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right, fine. What's your summary? <laughs> <laughs> all right. <clears throat> Don't be an ass. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. I'm sorry. <laughs> the This movie is Spirited Away. It's about a girl who's moving with her family. And then her family gets trapped in the spirit world. She makes friends with a dragon. She makes friends with another dragon after giving him a very good bath. And then, <laughs> after that, her first dragon friend gets shot with some paper. And all those paper cuts almost kill him. Yeah, wait, why is he almost dead? And then uh, after that, 
the she goes and returns the dragon thief thing to the witch that she didn't have to do because she already saved the dragon, but she didn't know that, and they're back, and now her family is free, and they can go home. I feel like your summary was just as confusing as mine. It was. I think yours made more sense, actually. I think yours has at least got the chronological elements. Also, there's a lot of really cool spirits. The yeah. spirit design in here is really pretty. Yeah. I My favorite is, like, as far as scenes go, it's the, the river spirit, but um, the uh, scene in the furnaces, like, the des- the minimalist design of the uh, the soot the soot sprites sprites yeah, yeah. it's just so cool Ah, oh, they're so good <laughs> this is the second Miyazaki that has soot sprites is it second or third because there's also soot sprites I don't know if there's soot sprites it might be dust sprites in My Neighbor Totoro oh it's been a long time since I've seen My Neighbor Totoro yeah they have, there's the dull dust ball guys that I oh, think I are totally dust totally believe soot, it but um Basically the same. The ones in Princess Mononoke are not soot sprites yeah. or dust sprites. I need to go watch the other half of they've that got, movie. They've got rattleheads. Ooh, <laughs> I like that. Well, you've met them if you've seen the first half. I don't know if they, I have. I they think mostly seen the turn their half. head to the side and then they... <laughs> oh, I have seen those. Yeah, <laughs> those are great. <laughs> Uh, and the radish spirit is cool, and the random frogs are cool. Everyone's a frog. Like, all the men are frogs. Yeah. Which is interesting. And, and all, all the women are human. But not quite, because there not are actual quite. human... Women as well. Women as well, that look human. <laughs> exactly. It's weird. It's very strange. It's a weird movie. It's a very strange... And there's the... Both of the witch sisters are more head than anything else. And they also dress exactly alike. Which, exactly alike. Like, even if you're identical twins, I don't... You do something to mix it up, you know? <laughs> like, you don't have to look exactly the I same. I have fallen asleep once in this movie and was so confused by the witches. <laughs> I woke up partway through and was watching and I'm like, wait, why is she wait. nice? And suddenly she's mean again. Mean what again? is going what is, on here? What is happening? <laughs> oh, that's fantastic, actually. Um... Yeah, I want to know why the why ha ha hatsu hadu ha hatsu ha which one the river spirit oh uh <laughs> hot soup hot soup hot soup yeah is <laughs> my he was the hot soup river almost dying at that point because he ate the charm no it's because. He stole the golden seal, yeah, and there was a spell on it that protective caused spell bleeding. that caused internal bleeding. Nice, yeah, love that. And so she, yeah, he got double hexed. Poor spirit. Yeah, I yeah. did like their homage to the fact that when you're falling, um, the teardrops will likely fall slower than everything else. Oh yeah, depending on like air velocity, and that was very cool. Yeah, I think that was nice. I did Thanks like that the physics well. there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It almost makes up. Physics. Almost makes up for the fact that you have a fly carrying a rodent. So <laughs> that's nice. The physics was definitely the first thing on their mind. Absolutely, in every scene of this movie. Yes. Also, what is it with rickety buildings? I guess like every rickety building is magic. Every rickety building is magic. Yeah, like this one in Howl's Moving Castle. Both of them feature very rickety buildings that are magic. Bunch of I think Castle in the Sky has a rickety blimp. No, the blimp isn't rickety. Oh, okay. It's pretty solid. Um, it's a rickety city. <laughs> it does have a rickety city. <laughs> That's not magic, though. Yeah, it is. Because it's flying at some point. Sorry, guys. Uh, we are spoiling all of the Miyazaki films. <laughs> <laughs> That's... <laughs> spoiler all this time was not in specific. It's okay. everything Miyazaki. <laughs> um, it's not magic. It's sci-fi. There's all technology to explain why the castle in the sky is doing what it's doing. Mm. There is. Uh, yeah. Again, what's the difference between technology and magic if we don't know how it works? <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Um, according to uh, Arthur C. Clarke, nothing. Exactly. However, I disagree with Arthur C. Clarke. <laughs> 
because I think the idea of sufficiently advanced technology is that um, you don't necessarily know how it got there, but knowing that a device is the thing that is powering it is very different than if it's just the magic that is in the world. Yeah, but what's the difference between a device that you don't know how it works and you press a button and it works, and a magical object that you touch and it works? Because... <laughs> because it's different, okay? <laughs> Okay, cool. Why are you asking me? I'm not an author. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> no one tell Connor that he's wrong. I guess I can't prove it. I can't prove it specifically. I don't have one of your books. So, That's true. Uh, no one can prove that you are or are not an author currently. I only have one book, and it's bad. <laughs> But it's no done. one, no one will see that. <laughs> <laughs> they might one day see a completely rewritten version of that book, but no one is seeing that book. Good, <laughs> love that. So, um, it was a simplistic story, and very gorgeous world as always. Mm -hmm. Very nice Spider Man, and um... oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking Spider-Man like the superhero Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> but it was a man that was a spider. <laughs> it's man spider. It's man spider. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Man spider. Um, I don't know why she thanks the mean lady there at the end. Probably for giving her a job. Or something. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. My guess is the reason is something along those lines. Because... If there's an arc for her at all, it's learning manners, I guess. Maybe. Cause like, That's true. You're right. Yeah. yeah, no, she doesn't have very many when she steps in there. Yeah. And she does leave. She's remarked multiple times that she doesn't have any manners. Yeah. And she does leave saying thank you to everyone and calling everyone ma'am and, and sir and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, okay, that's fine, but it was not a very clear arc. Not a very clear <laughs> arc. But it is an arc. It is. Miss part of the middle. It is. I love this movie. I think it's highly overrated. I love this movie, and I think it uh, should be higher. You think that it should be more highly rated by people in general? Uh, at least on the IMDb top two fifty list. It deserves to be on the list. It does not to be <laughs> deserve. It does not deserve to be as high as it is. Uh, Especially when Princess Mononoke is below it. That's just a crying shame. That's a good point. I need to go and watch it. There, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm pretty sure the half I haven't seen is holes in the middle, somewhere, from beginning to end. Except for I've seen the end like four times. Oh wow, yeah. that's weird. It's really weird. I have, I do not know what the cohesive story of Princess Mononoke is. It does get a little choppy in the third act. Ah. I will, I will admit that. But yes. this one doesn't. I still love it. They also don't think it's relatively choppy through the entire act. The whole thing is choppy. Exactly. <laughs> like all of it is choppy in this in this specific movie. Yeah. Good. So cool. What are we watching next week? Um well I don't know anymore. Uh oh yeah, because we might be doing Miyazaki. <laughs> so if we're doing Miyazaki, we'll watch one of them, maybe one that I haven't seen. If we aren't, then we're gonna watch the pianist. Yes. Um which I assume you haven't seen. I have not seen. Okay. Yeah. I don't think so. Guess we'll see when we start watching it. Yeah. I have seen that one. Yeah. I've also seen all the Miyazaki films. Yeah. <laughs> we can actually go watch something, again, something that's relatively recent in The Boy and His Heron if we wanted to as well. Yeah. I'd like to see it. I have not yet. Exactly. And I'm still mad that it means that my collected works box set is will now be a collected works box set plus one. Exactly. It's, yeah, collected works minus one. Yeah. But you can't really, I mean, like, the so ones one that I will own. We need to go and make a box set that you can just keep adding stuff into, you know? <laughs> it kind of ruined the packaging, which is part of what makes them cool. Box just sets. Just clicky. Click in and out. Yeah, something. I don't want that. <laughs> yeah, that's what you're saying there. Cool. Um, oh, I forgot I was. There was something I was going to say, and then I completely spaced it. 
Oh, Hopefully well. you remember next week. Uh, oh, also, um, this is not a guarantee, but we may have a guest next week. Oh, yes. The next um, episode may have a guest, which is fantastic. Yeah. Writing friend from the Caribbean and actually Utah. But <laughs> he's he's from the Caribbean. That is where he is from. That is, that's the only place I've seen him. So Caribbean and Texas. I've I've uh I've seen him on camera in other places. Uh, can you guarantee it's not the Caribbean? I can't. Yeah, it was inside <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so anyway, I don't think we've asked him yet. No. No. All right. We'll see when he's here. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, how do we end this?